All right, here we go. It's the game to draft. We'll see if G2 is able to get something back. They again choose to play on blue side. They have a Vi ban, which is very bizarre. Uh, Poppy Silas. Silas was used expertly that game by Chovy. We saw Draven uh, targeted at Hansama, trying to take that out of his pool, plus Callista and Oriana. So trying to take away any option of Hansama to play aggressively and try to win through Snowballers in the bot lane. And then Renekton and Jace allowing them to pick for Aatrox. Again, actually, Aatrox picked into Cassante. We'll see if Doran's able to do more with this matchup. This is the second time today that we've seen Aatrox uh, picked into Cassante. We want to see Cassante take this matchup and put his teeth into it and just really go for uh, aggressive paths or aggressive plays. It's always going to come out to the jungle. <clears throat> One thing that does happen with Maokai, who has been super high priority through the tournament he's you know it's not the same maokai that that we've seen this is a much weaker version of the champion they do have to give up a lot in the early game and versus rel rel is going to have a faster clear and is going to have more impact on those ganks she won't have that long range engage coming from the jungle position but we'll see whether or not this uh this is going to come back to bite them we also have talia being picked into a kali uh, I'm surprised that they don't that they still opt for a control mage into Akali. We saw how good Chovy is on this champion, uh, and we also gave up the Zaya Rakan pair again. So um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really like this draft from G2. That being said, if they can find a way to be super strong with Broken Blade on Cassante, then I want to see them uh, see them make it happen. Uh, but Lucian and Nautilus, you know, going for the extra empowered auto attacks. We'll see if they can take it to. Uh, to pays and delight on the lovers in bot lane. So let's get to it. Now we saw an adaptation in that game. It didn't quite work out where they didn't get first blood the way they wanted. That is the ace up their sleeve was played and they still didn't win with it. Uh, that is something that <clears throat> you can't forget how that affects your psyche. And then when you go behind and you still lose, uh, is G2 going to walk into this game and actually compete, or are they folded? Uh, something that can always be a danger for them. <clears throat> Especially when you care this much, right? You've already taken out two Eastern teams. You think this is your chance. Caps might be thinking this is one of his last chances uh, to go here. He is getting older, obviously. And we'll see how this ends up playing out. Phase Rush being taken in as Talia. This makes it very easy to kite away from Akali when, when the all-ins are coming. Uh, but it means that the damage is going to be super low from them. It This is sort of challenging Gen G. How well are you willing to play around our Weaver's Wall? Which has not been something they've had any problems with doing. Uh, if anything, the Korean teams are the best at the ones fanning out, kiting away from fights. That's something that has always been a strength of the region. All the teams able to uh, take the maximum, give the least in those fights. All right, Broken Blade taking the backside of that trade. Trades off, gets grasped, but then gives up the heal and then doesn't continue. So I don't like how level one is looking on Cassante here. I would much rather see him play this super, super aggressively. I'm going to be constantly looking at those HP bars in the top lane, just seeing how they tick down. Aatrox is whittling down a little bit, so maybe going for a little bit better. Mickey finding an engage here. Uh, Lucian upfront damage. They're going to be looking for all of that damage uh, <clears throat> to pay off. Now Cap's getting chunked again in this matchup, or getting chunked again in the mid lane, I should say, at early levels. Nautilus and Lucian were able to kill that ward, by the way. Did you notice that? Uh, actually giving up some amount of HP to do it. Nautilus using one of his potions to make sure that he's healthy. Always wants to be topped off for these 2v1s or 2v2s if they find the window. Ooh, I don't like that Maokai actually ended up casting that spell. Revealed himself. Are we going to get a dive here? Looks like... No. Rel, three camps hanging out. This is a very slow path. I love the Maokai adaptation here going straight into mid, but they have no more damage to follow it up. unfortunate they had the right angle perhaps Chovy only put himself into that position because he knew that there'd be no threat uh, but that is sort of a travesty that they're not able to consolidate that into a kill Aatrox going to start taking over this lane as <clears throat> as Cassante runs out of mana normally not a problem for them 
But uh, we'll see whether whether or not this plays out into an advantageous back of first recall. Uh, Rel is in the vicinity, so is Maokai. So we're playing so for some potentially explosive 2v2s up in the top lane. See if that amounts to much. Both champions both sitting on their potion. Again, like we said, they're going to wait until the last possible moment. They've got so much ability. Hold on, we'll watch this fight. Oh, the engage being turned onto, onto Nautilus. They go up. They actually get the first blood. Well played. Beautifully done by H2, uh, by G2. Oh my goodness. Finding the extra procs there. One of the things that you want to do when you have this matchup, you're going to see the hook, and then you wait. You do not root right away. You want to wait because you want Lucian to get that proc off. Make sure that you're using it, and then you can use the uh, second stack of the passive by getting the root from the auto attack as well. Now, their prize is that they get the push. They get a perfect recall from themselves. I want to see Nautilus get out onto the map right now. We're talking about that five minute window where we're gonna see some level six. Six is being hit, especially since both of these mid laners came straight back to their wave. They used the teleport quickly. Uh, if you don't miss anything, you will get level six off of this wave. There goes Nautilus looking to path forward. There's already a ward waiting for him in front of Raptors. We're going to get another look at this. Executing up front. You wait till you see the effect. Then you come up. Auto attack in response to the knock up. So that your auto attack, boom, gets to hit. Even though you're being knocked up, you still get that, which means Lucian is able to deal that extra damage. And Rakan bites the dust. Now, I like what Doran's done right here. Uh, getting a little bit of extra chip damage before going for the recall. This can matter as you come out of base. Uh, also, we've got Boots and, and Sheen not even going for Cloth Armor, opting for the Boots to try to dodge more of those sweet spots. Uh, we'll see whether or not missing out on any stats is going to matter here. Ooh, nicely done. Good timing on Yike to show up. This should mean that Jovi's going to die, but he actually gets out with R2 over the wall. Meanwhile, they've got 3v2 in the bot lane. Peanut always in the right place. They get a kill for themselves. So are they going to turn this into dragon or are they going to go for fast recalls? You have a couple options here. Probably not going to be dragon because Akali is so weak in the mid lane. They're instead going to just go and try to get the best push off, give themselves the best lane state coming out of the bot wave right now. Uh, Zaya having much better wave clear at this stage than Lucian and basically at every stage. Uh, only right at level 6, if Lucian's willing to use his ultimate to clear the wave, will he have any kind of meaningful advantage there. There we see the interaction of Cassante using his W to mitigate the Q3 plus dash from Aatrox. But Doran's super comfortable in this matchup, apparently. Happy to take it as is. Oh, this time it's Peanut's turn to, to outsmite. Here it goes and gets that camp. That's payback for game one where Yike showed up just in time to get the pick on the Gromp. Uh, that's going to be a pretty big deal for this Rel, actually. Now it's a camp ahead. Rather than being 40-40, 10 camps each, she's up two camps. She's also going to have inside track to her next respawn uh, and is going to hit level six. I think she's pinging that Krug's camp because she stole Gromp and because that should be a second. It might have even been a third Gromp. No, probably just second. Because that was a second Gromp, and because you have this, it could be playing for an early early level six. Depending on whether or not you're able to share any amount of resources, uh, that can be the difference between hitting six or not hitting six from the jungle, and whether or not you're able to keep your camp respawn timers up. Uh, it is not enough for level six, so Rel's going to come over and get six from one of these small camps, probably Grump. You might see her turn that into an immediate all-in in the bot wave. You see Akali already shadowing that lane. Aatrox is even taking the scuttle. What you could see right here is Aatrox come over, hold mid wave while Akali comes in and you can create a 4v2 in the bot lane. We'll see if they try to do that. Uh, probably off the menu now that Aatrox has to go back and cover that top wave. Might have preferred to see Aatrox stay there, go swing Akali over, and then you can have Akali whose teleport is going to be up in about a minute. You might have a better window to create a like five, you know, threaten a 5v2 or 5v3 in that bot wave. But instead, they're just keeping things standard. Happy to give, keep Chovy into this situation here. Showing the threat to Leo, right? Recognizing that there's tons of threat here. 
stepping back early no magic mantle uh probably looking to turn this into merc treads or maybe even just a verdant veil the merc treads will have some amount of effect versus the rel and of course akali good job caps here good job by chovi though micro movements right jittering back and forth able to get the maximum out yike is still hiding in this bush there is no information about him he's going to get that full chunk off from the q and the e and it looks like another sapling's going to hit as well actually no akali took the aggro that's so wonderful nice little trick from akali uh going to take the aggro on the sapling and then using the e to jump over the wall <clears throat> so that the sapling can't come and connect uh if you saw that the sapling tried to chase her she used e connected to the minion and then she jumped back very neat these champions showing or these players showing a complete mastery on these champions which is nice to see doran with a health and mana advantage obviously always going to have the mana advantage but something you can take when when you're broken blade you're basically going to be okay uh, even at half half mana you're okay you can still get all your spells off and you can all out effectively let's see if we get an engage here trophy walking right into bush they must have had a misread on what was going on is able to go over and dodge the root comes over the movement is insane from trophy how is he still alive dodging through all of this and in fact gets away he's gonna blast cone his way to safety except mickey is able to hit the queue my goodness how did trophy survive for that long that is crazy Q flash by the rel they're able to get the continuation kill catching them on the rebound saying you used a ton of spells and time trying to hunt down trophy we're feeling pretty strong here so we can go forward lucian's gonna feel pretty nice about this 1v1 situation for himself as well especially when you great get get a great culling off the way that he just did getting half the hp or about 40 percent out from pays i like this not waiting using the cannon Using the fact that the cannon was tanking up, go up, grab that plate. You can grab the the damage uh, the rest of the wave later. We'll see whether or not they go for a dive here. This is Zaya with an ultimate. This is a very difficult dive to go off with. I like how she's spreading out the feathers as well, dealing a little bit of chip damage and also making sure that she will be able to get multiple multi-directional roots out if it comes to that. Now Lucian on the recall and the fact that Nautilus is moving back means that Peanut has the inside track for this dragon. We're going to take a look at this play by Chovy. I don't know what he thought he was accomplishing by walking into this bush. Still got tagged by the end of that Maokai Roop. Did you, did you see? And yeah, the rest of the fight, nothing actually comes of it except Mickey eventually going. There's one missed auto attack. To have all that come down to a missed auto at the end is kind of backbreaking. Uh, we'll see if Chovy can survive. He says, he reports that he's much calmer now, that he's feeling that even when things go wrong, he's happy with just playing to his best, uh, which has been the knock on him in all the previous worlds. You people remember, or d people forget just how young he is. I believe he's 20 years old now. He's been on the on the world stage multiple times now. The Church of Chovy has been a thing for about four years, uh, several years removed from his days on Griffin. Uh, but remember, he came into the league as a 17-year-old, right? So years and years of experience, maturity, <laughs> catching up uh in a good way for him he's he was due for some positive regression in that uh or just some growth in general not even regression because it's not random that is just something that people need to experience now that you know that you belong now that you know that there's things that you can do better it's not always about you hyping yourself up and needing to get the solo plays letting letting yourself trust your team especially when you've got a team as good as gen g this team's stacked up and down uh, being more confident in them. You don't put as much on your back. So when you make a mistake, you don't feel as badly when it goes wrong. These are steps that these players need to need to take. Mm. I have to call that a miss by Caps. Caps trying to play to stop Rel from engaging. You're never going to stop the Rel engaging from that position. What you need to do is try to stop Akali from closing in on you. You can try to get the E to stun and then get the throwback after she dashes on top. There's no way to stop Rel at that position. Even if you got the knockback, it would all be about damage. I think their plan was, hey, oh, all out not being used, why? Perhaps trying to get more spells off in the rotation, I guess, but 
Uh, going back to to caps on on Talia, it felt like he was trying to get the kill onto Rel rather than staying alive by stunning Akali. Anytime that you suspect that Akali is going to get at you, she can only come in you come at you from one direction. So when she's going with that R one, you can if you have the E lay down, she's not going to be able to get any of those chain combos. If she does stun herself, you'll be able to knock her up with the uh, boulder coming out of the ground there. That's an ultimate from Aatrox. They are going all in right here. Caps actually peeling the... Oh my goodness, well played by Caps. Peeling him backwards to buy enough time to be able to cast the Weaver's Wall, casting it through the door and to get that little bit of a knockup, allowing him to jump. Whichever side Aatrox was going to land on was the side that Talia was going to juke onto the opposite edge of. Uh, nicely done to get away. It, in the end, it's ultimate for ultimate, but Doran gets to stick around in this lane. Uh, and this is the stage of the game where they're going to feel super strong. Has a 1,300 gold for them, uh, lead, lead for themselves already. Basically unkillable uh, from either of these lanes. We didn't get the lead that we were looking for from Cassante in the laning phase. So here's what we're talking about. This is Nimbus Cloak plus the advantage, right? You're trying to put those spells out. It, it's not going to accomplish anything trying to stop the Rel. You have to throw that at the Akali instead. Here's Broken Blade. I mean, this is prime time. It looks like he tries to get a couple too many spells off. Yeah, trying to reposition. Should have just gotten out with the all out using the extra uh, healing to try to get himself back healthy from there. But it's still available. It is something that he has going for him. But Aatrox is already back up 2-0 with a 23 CS lead. They're going to carry through top lane. This has also been another... Um, boon for Gen G that Doran used to be this weak side player when he played on T1 the the game plan was always about the other players and Doran just played weak side and in fact he was often considered the weak link on that team but on Gen G he's been thriving right willing to take carries willing to outplay with carries good job by Broken Blade showing how you can play against Aatrox right there using the W to not get snapped back and itself and in fact push yourself to safety a lot of tools that Cassante has. Infinite tools, right? That's why he got changed completely. What do you think of the new Cassante? Tons of power in his W, super long cooldown, feeling pretty clunky apart from that. Lean. Sometimes you just watch sometimes you just watch and see what are they able to do marvel at how good they are at doing it oh broken blade disjointing with the ultimate is he able to get a second dash off no he's not which means he's still picked up so cross map you spend four people on my laner i will spend three people on yours meanwhile i profit one pays with one wave they'll also come over and get the herald for themselves and trade it for the dragon herald is always the win here Taking that extra gold, not only that, but the permanent structural damage. We talk about it a lot. It matters. It When you look at the amount of fights, the amount of fighting currency that you have, the fact that you've dealt that much extra damage to a turret can definitely matter when it's time to consider whether or not there's an end. We'll see if Talia goes for a combo here. No, not even opting for the W. Doesn't trust her timing. Oh, yeah, and this is going to be death. The fact that you miss that means that you are dead. Nope. Using Weaver's Wall. Oh, it says I'm I'm safe. I come back in. Chovy trying to thread the needle. Always, always exciting to watch this guy just play this champion to the limit. Uh, one thing I want to point out right here, how Akali used R1 during the stun time, right? Trying to use it to, to buy herself some extra windows. Uh, basically moving herself around, trying to get that timing so that she spends time while she's in the air. Job using the unstoppable here. Aatrox, I love it. Taking it. You want to respond to the stun with the all out. That is exactly what they do, but it's still too much. Peanuts to follow up damage. Just too much crowd control there. They're able to hold him down anyways. Missed Q into a Q fl uh, W flash. Engage from Rel. Beautifully done. Rel getting everyone vacuumed up. It means that Genji's going to have a huge advantage. Not only that, but Chovy's looking at cleaning up caps. Caps has to burn his flash to get out. Uh, this game is getting out of control very quickly. Chovy, 54 CS in front of Talia. 25 CS from the Aatrox. 
and another eight in hand from Zaya. So they're just going to start winning with their wallets right here. They've also got the Herald and they're stronger. They've got the Zaya ultimate still available versus just Lucian and Nautilus. We do have we do have the all out from Cassante, but Cassante is nowhere to be seen and he just teleported top. So they're saying, hey, we're just gonna fold this, let you take what you want. We're going to try to trade back something in the top lane. I don't mind this when you're losing, right? Trying to get some sort of trade off tends to be good getting gold in your pockets so you can slingshot yourself back into a relevant uh, state can be super important. You just get the extra 500 gold from that outer turret. Also picking himself up another wave and GT will get some more out as they slingshot back out of the base. Look at that moving around, beautiful jumping in flash WR and the chain CC with the knockups there. Beautifully well done. Cho oh, Chovy actually missed the cue. Now well played by Caps. You see how he stepped down right there? Watching Chovy is something special though. It's a treat to watch him on this champion. Feels like zero frames wasted. Rel jumping over another wall, gets the slow out, but is not going to be able to continue. Now, Abyssal Mask, uh, Rel, anytime you go Rel Jungle, this is a champion that you absolutely want. Abyssal Mask on second. It's not only going to amplify your uh, mid laner's damage, but it's also so good for you. You have really good uh, base damage amounts. As you're jumping into that fight, you're just leeching away all of their resistances. You're holding people down for long enough. And when you come out, you actually start dealing a fairly meaningful amount of damage uh, in the fight. Sometimes you see it with Jack Show Protean, but this tournament, it's gonna be all about Radiant Virtue. People finally got the memo that that item's just insanely strong, even surviving a nerf and still being the strongest item on the patch. The Akali quality of life, the energy changes, making it so much easier to play this champion in the early game. You can really see that she's not losing in CS the way that she normally would, right? In previous years, we normally see Akali going down 10 or 15 CS because you have to hemorrhage some amount of the wave while you just don't have the energy to clear everything, right? You even have to use the W to regain some energy and use that, especially you might go like... Q, W, Q, and then put your point in E, just so you can have access to more uh, ability to get your CS. But now you're able to get an extra Q off at level two and level three. So the Akalis are just getting big, bigger and bigger and bigger. Stopwatch in inventory from Aatrox and Akali. These are the biggest guys on the team. Uh, so they absolutely want to make sure that they stay alive through these fights. They also have that extra gold available to them. We're even going to see Zonia second from Chovy. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see her recall soon and have it in hand because Aatrox has already got it as well. Aatrox having that extra damage to the turrets, but I expect to call it a recall with the completed Zonias here. Now looking at the shape of the fights, Normally what you'd like to see and what we used to see with all the Nami Lucians from last year at Worlds, you did pair it with Talia so that you could wall off the backside. Basically one of the ways that you can get away from Lucian is just constantly cutting backwards and eventually they need to overstep until there's not enough retreat. You take away his ability to be mobile in the fight, make him chase you, and then you collapse back on top of him. Uh, you want the wall there so that you can force the fight in a direction, right? So you put the wall out as Lucian's chasing. Normally we see this with Nar. And Nar can go and actually use that terrain to his own advantage. Cassante also can as well, but just not to the same extent as Nar does. But perhaps they weren't confident enough picking Nar blind in that situation. Beautiful triple knockup chain CC with Rakan and Rel. This is going to be a blow up fight. Is Cassante able to get the trade off? Probably not. And we're going to see Aatrox join into the fight, which means this is total doom from G2. They are just getting wiped off the map, not getting a single kill. Wallet diff, player diff, map diff, everything about it. They're just in a better situation. They are going to take everything. Akali, who deals very little damage to Baron. Notice how she goes for the wave here. Team is going to take the buff. She's going to push in the wave and get some amount of damage there onto the turret. This is something you want to do on these assassins that don't deal much damage to the Baron buff. Akali being first and foremost among, th among them. Look at that. Those... HP bar is just dead. Mickey's dead before he can do anything. The other two guys are at 50% health before they ever get to put an input in and their damage is just, that also allows Aatrox to, to arrive. And you're you're basically never seeing G2 use Talia 
the way that Talia needs to be used, where you need to cut off, find angles, find picks. You need to be very proactive. They are incapable of doing that so far in this game. So now we're going to see Gen G's ending technique, uh, most likely with the dragon spawning in three minutes. You normally see them push on the opposite side. They want to get this inhibitor down, but with three and a half minutes, that's a bit short. Uh, if it was fresh off of a dragon, that's when you definitely see it happen. What they seem to want to do here is push into these adjacent lanes. They're going to gain control over this quadrant. Uh, as always, Cassante saying, I don't I don't have a job to do. There's nothing I can do. We just fold to them right now. So I like that he's getting something back for himself, forcing somebody to come back and answer in the top wave. But you see this lingering line of vision that they have. That means that Genji will be able to go. Now, I love this plan right here, trying to set something up for yourself. This, oh, yeah. The sapling was potentially a little bit of a bait. I wonder if that stressed them out, but you do have Rel jumping in there. They seemingly all knew that something was gonna happen. Something that you have to be careful of in these stages. Well, you know, we'll shut up and watch the fight. Huge bedlam. This is actually what G2 wants. Fight under turret. This is the best case scenario for you. You don't want to get into a wallet bash versus these uh, champions that just have you completely gapped in that department so you end up getting the best case scenario the trap ends up working but doran is just so freaking strong means that he's able to take down Cassante. talia tries to turn his attention over there which allows rel to get in she might try to go for this kill beautifully timed by tina oh my goodness peanut moving target i can hit this guy in a moving target doesn't matter lands the q which has a delay to it beautifully done genji escapes but like I said, this is the site of... All right, we're going to let it go. This sapling right there, it seems like they know. I'm going to talk about that for a moment. Beautiful position. You get the extra dashes from Rakan. Pays has not been able to deal enough damage into the fight. Beautiful job by Broken Blade doing the all-out backwards into the pit. Makes them fight under turret. This is what you did not want as Gen G. You wanted to check all the boxes, force them to deal with a mid lane wave before going for this. They end up going for the play, exploding into the bush. Now, talking about the bush, in these live games, these guys are in the arena with their microphones. The crowd goes, uh, like you start hearing the commotion as people start mentioning like, oh, they're setting a trap. It, they don't hear the individual call, but what they do hear is the excitement and that comes through on the microphone. So then your own communication can be, oh, they're setting a trap. Where could they possibly be setting a trap? It must be in that bush. All right, let's see if we can go spring the trap. The idea is good, but they get a little bit caught up with the idea of doing it, forgetting that, hey, there's still some I's to dot, some T's to cross. You'd like to be able to get this wave all the way pushed in before you go for that fight to make G2 answer some tough questions, right? Are you gonna go answer this wave? Are you gonna let us just push in mid? Are you gonna let Aatrox just you know deal damage to your turret? Or are you going to take this fight with us and have Aatrox uh, come in and clamp down on you, right? That's the sort of question that you want to pose to these guys and uh, and see whether or not they come up with the right answer. By just taking the fight, you make it a little bit of a coin flip, right? Everyone's jumping in. They are clearly prepared. They know what they do. Like, yes, you're jumping into it and you're getting a huge engage from Peanut on Rel, but is it going to be enough? Like, they, they've they opted. Like, this is the fight they chose and you gave it to them. Uh, that's something I'd like to see a change from Gen G. But they barely got away by the hair on their chinny chin chin. And now they're able to collect Dragon 3. Baron's coming up in 90 seconds. Expect a fight from mid lane Pryo. Oh, that is chain damage. Let's see if they're able to chain CC. They're fighting in the dark right now. Everything there was done in the darkness. That is knowing how much each of these spells does and where it positions. These guys know exactly where those champions are going to land to get the maximum amount of damage. So they're able to get Chovy back into base that being said though he had just bought there's nothing really that he's looking to get maybe a control ward and a tark seal yeah exactly that these are the items that you pick up when you just want to play for that next fight not quite enough money to get the elixir for themselves probably would have seen that but check this out seven control wards purchased which means they're absolutely going to look to take control of this area of the map we're going to fight for mid lane prio first time you push the wave fast you go out and you collect this area you get shallow vision for yourself 
Second time, I want to see them stack the wave, catch it slowly. It is impossible for G2 to come out to the to this wave right now. So what I don't want to see from Zaya is just spamming abilities and cleaning up the wave that quickly because now you're just gifting the wave to them and there's nothing left to accomplish, right? Like what have you done? Rel is out of position. You see how Zaya is like moving back and forth here? It's because there's nothing left to do. This is something I want to see them improve upon. Take this wave, stack it, hold it, hold the enemy team hostage to it. You can go in and kill the casters so that your wave remains healthy. And then you just keep it right there. You let it sit. You even wait for the next wave to come. And then you can go shove that one in, especially now when we're talking about this Baron timer. Now the spawn is up. Now you crash the wave. Now you can go in for the position. It looks like G2 has no intent of going for this fight. Uh, maybe Caps didn't get the memo because he's in the Western Quadrant. Maokai obviously has no intent of going for this. Nor should they, right? They're down 9k. Absolutely not, right? Try to take something back for yourself. Maokai is trying to take control of this quadrant. Unfortunately, it's just with saplings. It's with nothing else. So it means that they're going to give up Baron. You'd like to see the support coming over and getting permanent wards down that might be there in time for this rotation for the dragon. Now, that said, controlling this quadrant doesn't really help anymore because you're going to see push and then a reverse cycle to go get soul. Uh, they'll just pick that up when they want. Right now, they've got two and a half minutes, basically perfectly timed where they're going to have exactly enough Baron to light up the waves, get everything pushing, and then they can come back when they're good and ready with very few good options available for G2. Peanut dutifully manning the bush here see if he goes for or looks for his play you see how chovy's staying by to not give away that there's that there's a baron buff here broken blade looking for a bit of a flank nice movement here slowly but surely they're going to give up some of this pressure as atrox comes in he actually is going to give up all that pressure now and teleport to the wave they're going to try to take this fight they want to punch their way through. They're not trying to set up anything else here. I expect to send some send someone over to mid. Yes, all right, there they go. Chovy needed to go pick up this wave because you want this wave dealing damage as well. And you want them to come in at the same time so that you can create unified pressure. All right, if you're G2, you tend to want a control ward right here, a normal ward here, and a normal ward here. So they've got the vision covered with their bodies right now. I like what where the lines that they have their vision out, but we're gonna see if Genji is able to get in the front door here. We could call this the side door, mid mid door being uh, or the front door being mid. Good job by G2, Broken Blade using Q3 to try to knock in the cannon. They're able to get this, but in the meantime, Genji is pushing this wave up. All right, we get the resurrection. We've got GA coming online here from Doran, but Peanut finds a three-man, four-man engage. Means that they get everything. Man, Peanut has found everything on this rel. It is going to be difficult to play against this team if he's going to play that champion at this level. Super forgiving champion with a lot of upside. Pays. <laughs> Daring them to step forward is did he did he get a quadra? Did I miss this? Is he gonna go for Penta? You might have Rakan shield him and actually go for it. He's looking. He wants this kill. He clearly wants this. I like what Yike's doing. He's like, hey, you want this? You want this extra kill? Giving him an option to try it, try to int it away. Anyways, well played by Gen G. Uh, a challenger emerges. Gen G actually looks stronger than JDG right now. It's going to be interesting. These Titans are on a collision course for the end both of these teams making it through in the shortest amount of time possible actually gen g doing it in four games they're going to make it to the knockouts jdg took five uh, but again these teams now have to wait for six days before they play again so we'll see if any amount of rust sets in the teams that they're going to be playing against are the teams that are going to battle nine ten or eleven games to get where they're going we'll see if that becomes an advantage or a disadvantage thanks so guys so, yeah, woo. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate all the support, keeping the channel going. Thanks for the likes and the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow through with the rest of the tournament. And if you haven't been there yet, go check out gigagamingacademy.com. We have a special new deal uh, in the coaching section. I think you guys are going to like it. So good luck. I'll catch you guys. Have a good weekend. I will see you tomorrow for... What's tomorrow? The the best of ones, the one in one bracket, the one in one bracket, and then we'll have the eliminations on Monday. I'm super excited to see that. All right, catch you next time. It's real.